Well, good afternoon, everyone, and a happy, happy uh, Wednesday. Hope that everyone is having a very good week. Uh, today's topic, uh, week actually, um, hope that you all had a good night's rest and uh, happy, good morning. Um, today's topic will be on press on towards the goal okay it will be easier to endure right suffering <laughs> if you understand that the refinest flame is a lifelong process realizing this truth the Apostle Paul wrote not that I have now attained this ideal or have already been perfect, but I press on to lay hold of, or I press on or to lay hold of, take hold of, or to make my own, okay, for that which Jesus has laid a hold of me. Okay, so now when I think of it, in his writings, in his writings, do you know that in a race, all runners, let's see, all, I'm just turning off my phone so it doesn't ring, okay? Now, in a race, do you know that all runners compete, but only one receive, receives the prize? So run your race that you may lay hold of the prize and make it yours. Now, every athlete who does, who goes into training conducts him or herself, temp, you know, temper, temperately and restricts him or herself in all things. Now, they do it to win a wreath or that, that will soon wither. But if we as humans running our own race, building our own spiritual self up from within, we're running to receive that crown of eternal blessings that cannot wither. Therefore, do not run uncertainly without definite aim. I do not box like one, like, like, you know, it's like shadow boxing or something without an adversary, without an adversary, because we all have like an adversary. And who is that adversary? Challenges of life. Um, you know, we buffet our body, handle it roughly, discipline it in hardships and subdue it for fear that... Uh, that proclaiming to others the gospel and the good things pertaining to it. Trust God that he will bring you across the finish line. You understand? Trust God that he will take you across the finish line. That I myself should like be determined. Good morning, Hassan. Be determined to press on and take hold of that for which Christ has taken hold of you. He took hold of you to save you and your salvation included many benefits in this life. Not just a home in heaven when you die, but here eternally, your eternal salvation began the day that you was uh, came into existence, the day that your mom had given birth to you. So it will never end. God took hold of you to restore you, to restore to you what the enemy has stolen from you, but you will need to be determined to take back those, you know, to take back what the enemy has stolen. Do not be passive and expect victory to just fall on you. It does not come it, you know, it does come by God's grace, G-R-A-C-E, and not by our works, but we must actively cooperate cooperate with the Holy Spirit and each step of the way, okay? Every day, good morning, I'm Lacey, how you doing? You understand? Each step of the way, everything is by God's grace, G-R-A-C-E, but we have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. With scripted, it is 1 Corinthians 9, 4, and 27. 
and Philippians 3, 12 and 2. Okay, we have to keep on pressing, keep on pressing. And we also have to understand that we can't be passive and expect victory to just fall out of the, you know, fall out of the SKY. But we have to keep on pressing, keep on pressing, keep on pressing. Don't that when Mr. Dave Grant wrote in his book, The Great Lover's Manifesto, and in that we waste away without effort. We human beings are essentially lazy and always searching for the easy way, but in reality, we need some tension in order to stretch us spiritually and emotionally, you understand, and to stretch us, to help build us up and to take us to the next level, T-A-K-E, to endure the race and take us to the, to the next level. You ever notice that when an athlete is running, you ever look like when they first start out, when they first start and then you look at their progression, you look at their muscles, you look at their arms like like Serena Williams or uh, Venus Williams. I think one of them had like an like a health issue. But when they first started, anybody, any anybody doing anything, Oprah, uh, and uh, Rihanna, Beyonce, Anybody doing anything, even people, uh, what's Tiffany Haddish, uh, I can't remember everybody's name, Taraji P. Henson. When you look at these people, when they first started, everybody has to start somewhere. So whatever it is that you are doing, run your own race, but don't give up. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be struggles. There's going to be things that are going to happen that is going to stretch you. You understand? So this is in order that we will grow, you know, that we agree that the struggle benefits us and that the struggle is good because it keeps us moving and is alive. And the Apostle Paul says, press on, and his phase indicated tension and struggle and it indicated that the Christian walk is not easy, but it is doable by God's grace. And in his book, Mr. Grant, he writes that he relates the following story. A number of bees was taken along on a flight into, a sp into space in order to see how they would handle the experience of weightless weightlessness. And in the weightlessness, the atmosphere that they would be able to float in space without any effort. Now, the thing is, the report on the experience was summed up in these words, and they enjoyed the ride, but they died. <laughs> Emphasis mine. I agree 100% with Mr. Grant, who goes on to say that we seldom drift into anything worthwhile. So hang tough in hard times. In the following verse in the Old Testament, the prophet Habakkuk uh, speaks of hard times, which he calls high places and states that God has given him hands, hinds feet, hinds feet to remain sure-footed during these times. Now, though the fig tree does not blossom and there is no fruit on the vines, though the product of the olive fails and the field yields no food, though the phlox is cut off from the fold, F-O-L-D, and there are no cattle in the stalls, yet I will what? I will celebrate. I will be happy. I will R-E-J-O-I-C-E in God, and I will exalt, that God will exalt me in the victory of my salvation. Okay, so God's 
I have to lean on God's strength and I have to have personal bravery and courage in to be, you know, and put my faith and trust in God's invincible army that he makes my feet like the hind's feet and will make me to walk, not just stand still in terror, but to walk and to make spir spiritual progress on upon the high places of trouble, suffering, and responsibility. So Habakkuk, that's the Habakkuk 3, 17 through 7. The term hind, H-I-N-D, refers to a certain kind of deer that is an agile mountain climber. Have you ever seen those movies on the National Geographic where they show those goats and those, I don't think they're billy goats, they're mountain goats and those deers that climb up the side of the mountain as they continue. You understand? So you have to be very sure-footedness in God's will for you for you and so that when the hardship comes and that's life you understand it, it'll come and that's life but God is so faithful that we cannot be intimidated nor frightened at all to be truly victorious we must grow in a place where we are not afraid of hard times but are actually challenged and we are strengthened strengthened by them and in them. And in these verses, in the Amplified Version, the, A, uh, the AMP Bible, it refers to these high places as trouble, suffering, and responsibility, okay? Now, people run from responsibility. We have to learn to endure suffering, and I say trouble as challenges, okay? This is because it is during these times that we are G-R-O-W-I-N-G, that we are growing, okay? If you look back over your life, you will see that you never grow G-R-O-W during easy, easy times, you sorry, Jenny. Can you give me the scripture? Okay, the race is First uh, Corinthians, uh, Philippians. Let's see, Philippians three twelve. I taught that in Sunday school. <laughs> It's Philippians 3.12. I remember I would give those to my Sunday school um, students to memorize during their recitals and stuff. I would give them each, each verse, and I would press on towards the mark of the high calling, okay? And to lay hold of and to take hold of, you understand? So that's Philippians 3.12, and then we have to also remember, and I, when I say remember, that when, if you look back over your life, and I look back over my life, I will see that, I, you know, you never grow during hard times. You grow during times of difficulties and challenges, and it's a it's a time that you're able to enjoy, so that you have gained during good um good morning, Azizi. You have G A I N D during those hard times, difficulties, and challenges. This is a really a life principle. And I have come to realize that anytime God is doing something within my life, like to strengthen me, to take me to the next level, there's always challenges and difficulties and shifts and mind shifts and thinking, thinking all kind of stuff. You understand? So I had to learn to, to change the way that I think. I had to learn to see my viewpoint differently. Then I had to learn to build bridges and not walls, and we'll discuss that tomorrow, okay? We have to learn that you work all week so that you receive your paycheck and enjoy your weekends off. You exercise, eat right, take good care of yourself. Then we enjoy a healthy body. You clean the house, you clean the basement, you clean the garage, and then you enjoy your nice, neat, 
clean space and clean surroundings. And each time you walk through them, you understand. And I'm reminded of Hebrews 12, 11, for the time being, no discipline brings J-O-Y, but seems grievous and painful. And afterwards, it yields a peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained, T-R-A-I-N-D, trained by it. So the person, when you, okay, look at Serena. Why am I, why is it Serena's day today? Okay, look at Serena, okay? Serena's an extremely nice person. Good morning, Kumar, okay? She's just a wonderful, nice lady. And now she's, she's okay, she practically lived her life to the point where she, was experiencing some challenges with her baby and with the pregnancy that she was pregnant. Then, okay, she, you know, and then she had, it wasn't toxemia, but if you look at all the challenges and struggles and now the baby's doing well, the baby's healthy, now her clothing line is doing well. Look at Kelly. Kelly has a nice clothing line she did with, uh, what was that? I wasn't dancing with the stars. America's Got Talent. And then she did uh, Australia's Got Talent. Then we didn't hear anything from Kelly for a while because I guess she was still building her career. Then Kelly ended up doing a couple acting scenes and you noticed that she was acting. And now she has an entire, uh, sw not swimmer, sportswear line for, uh, you know, she designed her line for women to exercise in and the yoga pants and all that other kind of stuff. I look at Demi Lovato, love Demi Lovato. And I have to respect Demi Lovato that she came out and she spoke regarding her challenges with her eating disorders and then uh, her... Um, I guess like, I guess she was addicted to some kind of thing, um, medicine or something. And I have to respect these people because these are challenges in their lives where they had to go through certain challenges. Now she's dating like this really nice, nice dude. And, you know, I feel I'm happy for her and I feel for her because I look, I don't know, why do I feel for these celebrities? Because they know, most people don't know the challenges that they go to, that they go through to endure what it is that they are enduring. And when you look at, I look at famous people, some people have their 10 minute of fame. Some people have their five minute of fame. Some people have a lifelong of uh, fame. But what do you do when you get challenged by life? You have to, no matter what, in our everyday life, I look at my life, oh my God, please. But I don't want the topic to be regarding about me, so I will mention famous people so that they can, at least they can relate to other people, certain celebrities, okay? Uh, remember the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Remember the butler that played Jeffrey in the, uh, in the movie, in Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? What happened to him after the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Most people don't know that he was a uh, he was he grew up in the theater. He's from the West Indies, from the Caribbean, and that he went back to the theater, and he's still acting in the th in the theater, not on film now. I guess because a to be a Broadway actor and a film actor. I guess it's like totally different, but people wonder what happens to people. People go through challenges. Hola, chica, como esta bien, bien? People go through stuff. I look at, you know who has amazing longevity and who's dating who right now? Um, Rosario Darson and Cory Booker. What? And then they, if you look at both of these two people, how they ended up meeting each other, only God knows. But the thing is, is that 
they, if you take both of their life individually, one is a politician and the other one is in acting. And if you look at their career progression in life, they both had to endure uh, struggles and they both had to overcome challenges and they both had to do their very best. They couldn't give up. Now they have to learn to be adaptable to each other. You understand? Understand what I'm saying? So life does that, and from these challenges, we grow as individuals and people. And I can honestly say that if a person allows God to strengthen them, you understand the love of God, the L O V E L O V E. This is very important. It is the love of God that will strengthen you. It is the love of God that will build bridges. It is the love of God that will reach out to people and embrace them, all nationalities, genders, uh, sexual or orientation, male, female, uh, families, single people, you know, uh, people that are wrongfully accused. And the thing is you have to be open like, well, I have to be open like that because I have to look from God's point of view when it comes to people. But when it comes to my ideal coaching client and my niche, that's something else. So we all have to learn when it comes to God's grace and mercy that, you know, God's grace and mercy is for everybody. And you can come to the throne of grace and receive God's love. Then we also have to learn to think, do what? Think differently, think differently, think differently. And that is you can move from pain to POW simply by re-educating your mind. And the Bible refers to this process as renewing the mind. Simply put, we must learn how to think think differently. If you have been taught to fear, you can be taught to be bold, courageous, and confident, okay? Rather than allowing fear to prevent your, um, to prevent your success, oh my God, speaking of success, let's take a look at the Bernard Alt um, Arnold family. How do you pronounce his name? Now that man owns the, what, what he owns the, it's a conglomerate. Okay. Louis Vuitton, Moet, Hennessy, and uh, LMV. Louis Vuitton. I just had it. Louis Vuitton. Louis, yeah, Louis, um, Louis Vuitton. Okay, Moet and Hen Hennessy. Okay, now that is a conglomerate, and everybody is being affected during the pandemic like everybody, everybody, everybody from the rich to the not so rich. God has leveled the playing field doing what? Because when it comes to thinking, our thinking process, we really have to be open-minded and we got to learn to not be biased. Can I say that? B-I-A-S, bias, okay? We have to learn think and learn and think differently. Right now, I can't, I can't imagine that India and China is at war doing what and why? Like, why are they fighting? I still don't know what that means. I'm not, why? And what are they fighting with? They're not fighting with tanks and, uh, and guns. I think they're doing it a little primitively because it's at the border of the, the, the both countries. So we have to learn that if you have been taught to fear, you have to taught to be bold, courageous, and confident. Rather than allowing fear to prevent your success of joy in life, you can accept that it is a fact that throughout life that you will 
have to either run away from things in fear, been that, and then we or we can face them confidently. And fear has a large shadow, but it is actually very small. When we fear, we will suffer. We already suffer from the things that we fear, okay? Fear brings torment, and God doesn't want us to be tormented in anything or by anybody or, you understand, we have to really learn acceptance, really learn acceptance and to embrace the people. So here I'm giving Giving you a physical hug okay and then throughout life we have to instead of thinking that you cannot do things if you are afraid make up your mind that you will do whatever it is that you need to do even if you have to do it do it afraid change your thinking regarding f-e-a-r we allow fear to become a monster in our thinking but it is one that will come back quickly when confronted okay so here is the next thing fear is like the school bully <laughs> Oh my gosh, if we look at it that way, fear is like the school bully, okay? Fear is like the school bully. With the school bully, right, comes onto the playground, instead of thinking you can't do things that you're afraid of, change your thinking, and this will allow fear to become a little tiny monster instead of like a big giant monster. Okay, the renewing of the MIND is most important thing to a person because we need to change the way that we think in order to do those things that God is calling each and every single one of us to do. Jesus died for our sins and he wants us to E-N-J-O-Y, enjoy the life that he has provided for for us, God's words teaches us that he has provided a good plan for each person, yet they will never experience it until they know about how to do what? To access the goodness in life that God has given us. When I look at the... Uh, when I look at the Moet, Hennessy, and Louis Vuitton legacy with Bernard Arnault, I look at that and I'm saying to myself, now his daughter is the uh, executive vice president of the company, okay, so she will be running the company after uh, when after he steps down. In order to do that, she has to follow him and shadow him and be in his footstep like constantly. She has to attend every board meeting, every executive meeting, because she is being mentored and trained to do what? To handle the family's inheritance at what? After the father steps down. So in the meantime, we have to be open-minded when it comes to our thinking, because I sit down and I say to myself, okay, so if this company is now a conglomerate and it's under one umbrella, okay, and you have four individual companies that are successfully being successful at the same time, each company is growing. I think in one day, I think he made something like $32 million, but during the pandemic, his company took a uh, no, in one day he made what thirty two billion, but since the pandemic, his company took a hit of thirty billion dollar loss, so that was from say he was making what a hundred billion that was his income, so he's lost thirty billion, so now he's like worth like seventy two billion seventy nine billion depending give him give a billion here <laughs> look give a billion here, take a billion here. <laughs> Anywho, when you are doing anything, even a small mom and pop, and I mentioned Louis Vuitton, Moet, and Hennessy because we all love Moet champagne. 
We all love Hennessy and we all love Louis Vuitton products, okay? So I'm just trying to give you something that you can relate to. In order to do that, they had to start thinking in such a way that they had to be able to appeal not just to who? Not just to love the luggage, but they have to be able to think of the company within where do you see yourself as a life coach, a business owner, business partner, whatever. Where do you see yourself within five years, 10 years? You understand? God died so that we can start using the other 90% of our brain, learn to build bridges, good friendships, good partnerships. You really have to learn to play nice with people in the sandbox and learn to respect each other's boundaries. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Nobody wants to be the bully on the playground. And we won't even deal with the racism that's going on in the country, but let's continue. Now, if you're doing the renewing of your mind and God wants us to change the way that we are thinking, being, doing, growing, existing, living, you understand, helping and expanding and how we are reaching out and embracing life and people, we really, really, really have to think differently and be differently. Who am I serving? Who am I here to help? You understand? Who can benefit from what it is that I have to offer? And then you also have to learn that what the Bible says in Romans 12, 2 is true. People perish and their lives are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. In the King James Bible version, it says, my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. In the amplified version, the AMP, is that people perish because and their lives get destroyed because they have no knowledge, right? I see people, when I look at some of the foolishness that's happening around the world, I'm like, you will invest in guns. You'll flood the communities and the countries with drugs, but you won't give them a daggone book and invest in them, the people, so that their brain and their thinking can expand. You understand what I'm saying? Who the hell wants to be a drug lord? All you're doing is destroying the people and the land and the country, and you're not tapping into these people's natural gifts, talents, and abilities, okay? So you can't do that. So, you people, human beings, God has given us, have you ever seen those videos where people come in and they show you people without any hands or a foot, like that one dude, that's why I was laughing at myself because if I'm afraid of the camera and the microphone, <laughs> And this man, he's going around the world speaking to people in high school and colleges, and he has no arms, and I think he's a quadriplegic. Okay, he has no arms and no legs, and he is speaking to people, encouraging them, telling them not to give up on life and how precious they are and how important they are. Why? We have to change the way that we think, the way that we see each other, the way that we see each other and the way that we connect with each other. Then we also have to deal with whom? Whom, 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 whom. We have to think that when we have to learn to get proper training, because instead of fighting in fear or merely putting up with fear, we have to start praying about praying how to gain entrance into, you know, how to start praying and how. To, that God is going to give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, revelation, and insight 
and light into the entrance of our life, okay? Especially if the fear is a repetitive one. Here's a scenario, okay? With this scenario, Miss Trisha, we're going to use this lady's name as Trisha was haunted by an unreasonable fear that her husband, Mr. Bob, would husband Bob, not not me, but her husband Bob, <laughs> would get involved with another woman and leave her. And then her fear made her so suspicious that, and we're women, we're women. We are like that. Aren't we? Uh, aren't we like that? Oh, dang. We, we know we like that. We have been like that. Have you ever seen that movie, Acrimony, that Tyler, Mary, Pat Tyler Perry movie, Acrimony? You understand? This is this uh, in that version. And let me tell you something, right? When we think that Trisha thought her husband was going to have an affair and that he would get involved with another woman and then leave her and then her fear made her suspicious and she frequently accused her husband of things that made absolutely no sense to him at all. Many people are in relationships right now at this current moment and some of them are so insecure when it comes to either he's constantly accusing her or she's constantly accusing him. And then what happens? Then she would even, even though some of these accusations are true, but sometimes they're not true. You understand what I'm saying? So we can't always look for the bad things, but we also have to change the way that we think. For example, if he needed to work overtime, she would call his office and check and make sure that he was there because she suspected that he was seeing another woman, okay? And we know that people do have affairs on the job, but it's not every single person, okay? Don't lump everybody into the same, what's the name, okay? Now, if for some reason he did not answer the phone and then she would panic and then she would even get into her car and drive past his job, okay, now she's stalking him at work. So one night she called to check on him and when he did not answer, she drove drove to his office. He was in the bathroom when she called and he immediately left to go home after that. But the time she arrived at his office, his car was gone and the little voice inside of her head began saying, torturing her that with accusations about Bob, she was surprised to find that his car was in the garage, but it was too late to, for her to gain control of her emotions, okay? So she was already enraged with anger and suspicion. When she approached Bob, she was saying to him, to him so many things that made no sense to him at all that he began to wonder, you, have your boyfriend or husband ever questioned your sanity? <laughs> Men think women are already cuckoo. So now he's questioning her sanity because this scene and others like it are slowly but surely eroding Bob's respect for Trisha. And okay, so now you can put, you can use this either Trisha for Bob or Bob for Trisha. You understand? But the thing is, what I'm trying to say is you have to learn to trust at one point because at one point, you see, you see her cuckoo crazy, crazy actions and all this other kind of stuff. Now her husband's losing respect for her. Why? Once he brought her to a special, once he brought her a special bracelet, they were planning to go to dinner that weekend. And then he had hidden the bracelet in the middle of the week while cleaning out the drawer she normally would not go into. She found the bracelet. And once again, because of her fear and phobia, and she immediately thought that it was a gift that he had purchased for another woman, but he actually bought her the bracelet for herself, it never entered her mind that the gift was for her and that he had hidden it so that he uh, 
so that she wouldn't find it, you understand? Because he wanted it to be a surprise. Look at the possibilities of your life and I guess all your life situations and scenarios, okay? Now, as we continue with Bob and Trisha, even when Bob told her that he had purchased it for her, she didn't believe him at first. Why? She didn't believe him. Why? You understand? You ever been so messed up that that she didn't? Trisha's behavior began to seriously affect their relationship, and he told her that she had to get to the bottom of these ridiculous fears. Okay, this is a serious phobia. She he never gave her one like he had never given her one reason to distrust him or could or that she couldn't understand what her problem was. To be honest, she didn't understand it either until she began to seek God in P R A Y P R A Y E R. God revealed to her that her fear was the fruit of a sudden and tragic change in her own life when, as a child, her father left her mother for another woman who he had worked with, okay? So you understand we have all types of traumas and issues that, that has nothing to really do with us at as an adult, but because of other people's fears and things that happen to other people, and we see it happen to other people, it's always good to learn a life lessons from other people. But the thing is, is that because it happened to her mom as a, a uh, and she was younger, she's taken that thought and that mentality and that fear that that would happen to her as an adult as she has gotten older, okay? So many fears are the result of something that happened in the past and that we fear will happen again. But if a person's mother died of cancer, they might fall prey to a fear that they will end up having cancer, or if they become paranoid and fearful, you know, that every little ache, pain, sprain, oh, I feel a pain here, pain here, pain here, pain here, feeling that, you, you understand, that it's cancer, and it really isn't. You understand? Fear that you will suffer causes suffering already while you are in that fearful stage. You understand? Fear will have <laughs> fear will have you running around doing all kind of foolish things. I'm not saying not pay attention to your body. Don't pay, I'm saying pay attention to your body. Pay attention to what your body is telling you. Pay attention to your relationships. But these are a different type of phobia. Okay? Phobia, okay? Poor training. Parents, teachers, parents, teachers, and role models can teach children how fear, how to fear, and they can teach them how to be bold. How do you do that? Easy. A mother who is fearful herself will transmit that fear to her children. My sister's afraid, one of my sisters is afraid of dogs and cats and animals. And her children to this day grow up with a affection for them, but they're not too personal with them. You understand? Uh, <laughs> my sister goes, Jennifer, look at us. We got a new dog. We got a new pet. I'm such a friendly, open type of person with animals and pets and stuff like that. Let me tell you something. I go to the house to see uh, if the if, if the dog was inside the house. The dog was tied, not tied, in a little dog house at the end of the property. <laughs> she hadn't gotten over the phobia and her of her fear of animals, so the dog was allowed outside the house on the property, but the it wasn't allowed inside the house. Why is that? 
Because when she was younger, oh God, forgive me, Colleen. When she was younger, we was on our way to uh, to Colgate Pool, and it was me and my sisters and Carol and that Stephanie's mom and a couple of our few of our friends that we grew up with, the kids in the neighborhood. So we all go into the park, uh, to the pool. And basically what ended up happening is there was a pack of wild dogs that was in the neighborhood and the dogs started chasing us down State Street. So we was hauling, but whoop, 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 and they was chasing us. <laughs> then we started, you know, we're little girls. The drama. Anyway, basically what ended up happening is me, Carol, and some of the girls jumped up on top of a vehicle. And we at the top of the vehicle and we say, come on, Colleen, Colleen, come on, come on. And the dogs was just chasing her around the car and chasing her around the car and chasing her around the car. And then she couldn't get up. So a lady that was standing on her veranda on her uh, in her front on sitting on her porch, uh, saw what was happening and it looked like she had just mopped the kitchen floor and she had opened the door so that the floors can dry and then basically what ended up happening is my sister ran through some hedges okay she didn't run up the driveway <laughs> she didn't run through the driveway she ran through these hedges like through the hedges and the lady saw her and caught her and caught her up and come on honey come on baby come on sweetie took her in the house and then my sister's crying and then we all ran oh are you okay are you okay and ever since that traumatic experience her husband loves animals and loves pets and <laughs> Thanksgiving and stuff and her husband will come home and say well look I got a pet or I got this animal and she'd be like yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's nice <laughs> she'd be like well she goes well that's nice where are you gonna keep them <laughs> why is that because she hasn't really gotten over her trauma of you know, because she was traumatized. My brother has a little tiny, tiny, tiny little dog. It What kind of dog is it? It's not a chihuahua. It's a little bigger than a chihuahua. Max is now ancient because, you know, him, him and him, Max grew, Max, he's just the sweetest little dog. And Colleen would come to the house and she'd be looking, Max is so well trained. Such a house dog, and Colleen, Colleen and look at that Max and go like, "Hey Max, like, hmm, don't you come over here?" <laughs> <laughs> so, what is it the thing that you are afraid of? You understand? We have to get to that point in life where we get over certain things. Me, I love animals, and we both, listen, and we both experience the same thing, but the thing is, is that I love my animals. I don't trust other people's pet because they raise them, so anyway, when it comes to proper training and poor training, parents, teachers, and role models can teach children how to fear, or they can teach them to be bold. A mother can be fearful herself that will transmit that fear onto the children okay cautious about many things and a silent fear sinks into the heart of their children i see it all the time i see children come into the lab many times to get you know to get their blood drawn and i put the tourniquet on and the kid is naturally calm but the mother is so oh, oh, Ooh, 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 ooh. Is it gonna hurt? Ooh, ooh, ooh. And they're so anxious and so that now that that fear is transmitted 
from parent to child and now the children become anxious and then the children become you understand and i sit down and i say to myself like okay uh can you just calm down mom can you just be still for a minute mom or if it's two parents and one parent is neurotic i have to like put the neurotic chaotic parent I'm like, can you like leave the room for a minute and let the calm parent stay where I can just continue to do my venipuncture? And that is how fear is transmitted, especially to children. We should not teach our children to live recklessly, but we should teach them to be bold, take action, and never to be afraid of making mistakes that they won't try things and i always want my good morning adam i always want young people especially millennials and the next generation i remember how many things that i had to try to be able to at least get to this point so why won't we let our children try things and do things and explore and be creative okay and we have to help our children and teach them to understand our uh, that those that are under authority we or that they also have to take chances in life as well you understand we have to teach them submission and we can never take a chance that they will never make progress progress always requires stepping into the unknown experience gives us confidence but we can never get experience unless we step out and try things and you know do things and see what it is that we like from what we don't like a child who is told over and over again that you you better not try that or you better not do this or you're going to get hurt. Guess what? They are going to grow up doing what? They're going to be afraid of what? And they should never do that. You understand? Children will more likely develop a deep-rooted fear of trying new things. You understand? If a child hears, be careful, be careful, be careful, they'll never put on roller skates. They'll never try to do, like, they have those nice, really, uh, those parks where you can climb up those little wall mountains. You understand? They won't ride a bike. They won't sing. They won't act. They won't play an instrument. Why? You have to be able to let them do things and not be afraid to fail, but encourage them, encourage them, encourage them. Because from junior high school to high school, you know how many things they're going to be presented with within their lifetime or during their uh, uh, educational period in high school? Let them try some things. Some things they'll like, some things they won't like. You understand? But at least let them try. Then they have to decide. You have to decide and I have to decide. What does the future hold regarding where am I going to be tomorrow? What is my next right move? You understand? What is the next right step or thing that I'm supposed to be doing or taking or you understand none of us knows for sure what the future holds and this is a lack of knowledge that often opens the door to fear what if a what if i become disabled i thought about that like if i become disabled what the heck's gonna happen to me what if my spouse dies or what if what and this is where a lot of people think what if i become disabled what if my spouse dies what if my child dies what if i have what if there's another world war w a r with what's going on right now within the country because everybody's trying to avoid another civil war w a r what about terrorism what kind of world will I be living in in 25 years from now? What kind of world will my children be living in in 25 years from now? Okay, wondering about these things we don't have answers to. 
opens the D-O-O-R for fear. Why? Because we're not really talking or listening to each other, okay? Now, instead of wondering or trusting God or learning to trust each other, whatever the future holds, God will enable us to handle it when the T-I-M-E-C-O-M-E-S, when that time comes, okay? Whenever you, wherever it is that you're going, whatever it is that you're doing, whatever you are at in life at this moment, God has already been there and paved the way, P-A-V-E-D, has already made a way for you, okay? So God has already made a way for each and every single one of us, and good morning, Marvin, okay? And God, when I look at some of the things that people have been through, some of the things that I have been through, that with my... I had to learn gracious courage along the way. Do that make sense? That I had to learn to get over fears that I, that, and then I had to learn to show and display courage, love, and compassion all at the same time. Then I had to remind myself that when that we must go through things in life because life is challenging. Life is like that. And God gives us the strength to go through these challenges, to strengthen us, to stretch us, okay? And when we merely fear going through some things, we do it without any help from God at all. Why? Because we didn't ask for his help. So now I'm asking and I'm constantly asking that God help me. I know that God knows best and God will always take me to the next right thing to do and the next correct thing to do and the, the next right turn and that I had to learn to remember that some of these things that God has brought me through and I think, how did I do that? How did I get through this? How did I manage this? How did I endure this? It was because of God's G-R-A-C-E and power, P-O-W-E-R. Then I have to learn to open, have an abundant mindset and that I have to be able to do what I need to do at the time and that he will always do the thing what? that God will always bring me through it and he will always strengthen me and he will always, what? Have my best interest at heart, okay? So if we, we look at the way that our future is, okay? We worry about the future, but if we know the one who holds the future, and I can honestly say that it's good to plan, it really is. It's good to plan and and to plan for the future. But like, <laughs> as we can look at what's going on right now in life, there are a lot of unpredictabilities that is happening right now. And we have to do the one thing. We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future in the palm of his hands, okay? So that we can look forward to expectantly a good future and a better life and peace inwardly without fear. And if God brings you to it, he will always bring you through it. So don't matter, no matter what it is, if God brings you to it, he will bring you through it, okay? And don't worry about that. Then we're going to take a look today at Miss Mary. Mary, Mary, why are you bugging? I love Mary, Mary. But And then there's uh, the two Marys that uh, sang. But this is for Miss Mary and Martha. And Mary and Martha, the two faces of love, okay? Mary and Martha had a, Mary had a Martha, <laughs> Mary had a Martha, <laughs> Mary had a sister named Martha. Now, our world today offers women, even women who love God, pressure from many sources, okay? We never seem to have enough time 
depression. We want to do well as a wife or a parent or a mom or a pressure. We're called to be good stewards and of the finances and the things that God gives us and effective managers of a home pressure. Okay. How do you handle the pressures of life with peace and with peace, P-E-A-C or panic, P-A-N-I-C. Okay. Peace or panic. And I say it every day. We have a choice, always choices, always choices, always choices. Okay. Now, peace or pressure. That is the question, okay? In Sister Mary, two sisters, Mary and Martha, two sisters, Mary and Martha, God presents us with a classic study in opposites when it comes to managing the demands of life. This story begins with these words, okay? A certain woman named Martha welcomed Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, into her house and as she and she had a sister called Mary, okay? Then what happened? When Jesus went on went into the home of Martha, Martha welcomed him in for dinner, but she became distracted by all of the preparations, the busyness in the kitchen, the dealing with the multitudes of details on her mind and anxious that everything would go well. And Martha was a whirlwind of activity. You ever been like planning a party and you have to do everything because you didn't ask somebody to help you? <laughs> so now that you don't trust anybody to do anything and now you have to do everything no 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 well something like that similar to that but basically how did your lack of peace show itself first of all the thing is when you can only do what you can do and then God will take you to the next level to do the next thing that you can do, okay? So this is the thing that we have to think. Now, first of all, let's take a look at Miss Martha. Martha was stirring the pot, du, 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 not only in the kitchen, but also in the family room, and she stood accused, you know, accusing Jesus. Do you not care? And, you know, that's you can pick that up in verse 40. And accusing Mary, her sister, do you not care? You have left me alone to serve alone. You can pick that up in verse 40. Complaining about the burden that had assumed her. She's bossy, blaming, distracted from what mattered most. And what was the, what was the thing that mattered most? She's harping and yarping, which you'll notice is praying spelled backwards, okay? In contrast to this hurricane of female hyperactivity, because we're women, we, we can get like that. We find the other character, Mary, resting at God's F-E-E-T while Martha is doing what? Restless, restless, restless. Worshiping while Martha worries, at peace while Martha panics, you know, while Martha's panic level rises, sitting while Martha is stewing, listening while Martha is lashing out, and commended by Jesus while Martha is confronted by who? Okay, so which would of us, as an outside observer, what is it that you see as you cope with life's schedules and commitments and pressures? Martha, 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 Martha. Are you normally in turmoil? Are you trusting? Are you at peace? Are you prone to running around in circles? Or do you rest in God? Okay. Is your lordship with Jesus your first priority? Or are you busy to sit at the foot, sit at his feet, sit at the man's feet, or sit at God's foot, or sit at the throne and just enjoy doing what? His presence, his essence, 
and just being centered, be focused, be committed, and being present, okay? You have to be able to do those things too, okay? This is damn handsome ass, Marvin. <laughs> How's things, Marvin? How is things in Belize, huh? How's everything? How's the tourist industry? Are you getting a lot of visitors? Huh? You getting a lot of visitors? Are they touring? Oh, they're listening. But anyway, next thing is ultimate resource. Let's move on to evaluating the way that we handle the trials of life, okay? You what do you, <laughs> what do you do when trouble comes your way? How do you handle the problems that touch your life? For instance, do you tend to tell a friend? Do you call a counselor? Do you join a group? Do you go shopping? Do you get a new hairstyle? Do you take a pill? Pop a pill? Do you hide in a novel? Watch a movie? Do you fall apart or do you become an emotional eater? These two sisters, Martha and Mary, face real life and death challenges. And I don't want to cause, I don't want to say trouble, but I would rather say challenges. And we've already witnessed that Martha, that Mary and Martha's hospitality as they welcomed Jesus and his disciples into their home for that meal. Okay, true is that wonderful day almost turned into a crisis, but they had to face so much of this family crisis as a family and they had to face it together, okay? So now you can also take a look at, you can see their beloved brother, Lazarus, okay? He was sick and besides being dear to them, he was probably their sole means of support at that time, back in biblical times, okay, as he was probably the head of the household, and back then women weren't allowed to work. They weren't allowed to do too much of nothing, okay? So then you also have to take a look that the Bible mentions that Mary and Martha has a, they didn't even mention that, no. The Bible never mentioned whether Mary or Martha had a husband or whether Mary or Martha had children? Nope. It only mentioned that their brother was seriously ill, and that meant not only great sadness, but an unknown, insecure future as well. And life happens like that. It happens with sicknesses. It happens with loneliness, barrenness. It even I feel for for single people. I feel for divorced people. I feel for blended families. You understand because most people think, oh, because we all have our own challenges in many different areas at many different times. Good morning, Didi. Thanks for joining. So we all have challenges. Single parents have challenges and the married couple have their only chance have their challenges then when you look at uh, illness illness business we all have challenges and struggles and you have to remember that we follow a we have to do the wise thing and that is why should we turn solely to a friend or a counselor or a support group when we can also turn to turn to God okay and ask God for divine counsel and divine wisdom and ask God to help you to build relationships and friendships and when we have that friend that his name is J-E-S-U-S -S, the friend that sick is closer than a brother okay why should we women who profess to love and trust God dabble in like 
quick fixes and appealing escapes uh, into pleasure, entertainment, vanity, all those kind of things. Sometimes we just have to do the one thing that we can do, and that is stick to itiveness. Okay, we have to face it, deal with it, do the best that we can. Ask God for favor. Learn what we can learn. Prep, prep. Prep, pre preparation, preparation, preparation. And why should we give in to the, you know, because God is the ultimate resource. And I say it all the time. I We all have challenges. And when I look at God as the ultimate resource, I lift up to my eyes. <laughs> I lift up to my lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from who? From God who made heaven and earth. In Psalms one that Psalms one twenty one, one and two. There's a lesson in faith in this, okay? And then we have to do the next thing. What do you think of when you hear this phrase, the odd couple? This phrase has come to describe two people. Remember, remember that movie, The Odd Couple? Two people who handle life in contrasting ways. Well, my friends, here it is. These two sisters, Martha and Mary, certainly qualify as the odd couple, okay? Now, why are they the odd couple? Because, take for instance, the scene when Jesus and his disciples visited their home for dinner so that Martha was bustling with unbridled energy while Mary is what delighted in worshiping at the feet of 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 Abba okay and this is the things that we have to look at we have to learn to be able to humble ourselves okay and learn that let's look at martha's response and then consider mary how did martha respond perhaps in any case how did she react when she learned that jesus was approaching or the savior was approaching as soon as she heard that jesus was coming she went and she met him true in true form martha leaped up rushed out Rush, do, 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 do. And she ran down the road do, 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 to meet who? Jesus. And then Martha, statement of faith. Martha had a statement of faith. Martha may have had abrupt and hurried, but her heart was in the right place. She turned in trusted in his power to heal love god she ventured and that you and me had been there she goes she runs to him Martha. she goes lord if you were there my brother would not have died okay you can look at that and say well martha 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 martha's le uh lesson in faith is that was right to go to Jesus, but she had missed a central truth regarding that. And that is when she volunteered. I know what that, whatever that you may ask God for, God will give it to you. Okay. God will G I V give it to you. Jesus corrected her by stating, I am the resurrection and the life, and he who believes in me, though he may die, shall not perish, but what? He, he shall not die. So what basically what he's saying is, if we continue to put our faith and trust in God, is that we we shall live he shall live and he is saying martha i don't have to ask god, you know acts of god 
but I am God and life is and in me and he who believes in me shall live and that's basically what he's saying to her that he is saying I don't have to ask of God I am God and life is in me and he who believes in me shall live Precious one, these are the things that Martha recognized his P-O-W-E-R, okay? And we have to also recognize God's power. We also have to be, recognize it and treasure it. Why? But to her understanding of the deity, you know, his deity was incomplete until he corrected her. You understand? Do you believe that Jesus is God in the flesh? Okay. Some people do. Some people don't. Some people was an excellent. Some people see him as only a teacher, but he is a teacher. You understand? And we have to be taught these things through the Holy Spirit. Then we have to recognize that the fruit crown in the shade, we now know how Martha, one member of the odd couple, <laughs> Martha and Mary, these are the two sisters, responded to Jesus after her brother's death, almost in cue, and the energetic do-it-yourself Martha leaped up and blood bolted out of the house to meet Jesus. She ran before and she reached the, by the time she got to the doorway. Now did Martha's sister Mary respond that the ever pensive Mary, you know, stayed in the house waiting on Jesus and Mary was sitting in the house until word arrived that the teacher has come and is calling for for you. You understand? They both responded, but one responded differently. One was really, really excited and overzealous or very zealous, but you have to embrace them. You have to embrace them anyway. You saw how good Jesus was because Jesus embraced them anyway. Jesus embraced Martha and Jesus embraced Mary, both of them with their differences, okay? So when you have to take a look at that, you also have to learn to that these two sisters, this proverbial odd couple show us ways of managing life and they, you know, and please note that each way has its benefits. Martha definitely got things done and made things happen, but don't miss the importance of spending time in Mary's mode as well. And that is waiting on God. And that is, you understand when he, when we choose to spend time out of sight, S-I-G-H-T, and close to Jesus, important things can happen. And these are the things that can happen. When we read and study his word, we linger in a sweet prayer. We commit in a memory favorite scriptures, like a memory voices favorite scriptures. We meditate on things of God, meditate on the good things that God has done, that God is doing, and that God is going to do. Okay, and then talent develops itself in solitude, talent of prayer of faith, the prayer of meditation, of seeing the unseen, okay? And then with the two faces of Mary and uh, Martha, we also see that there was service, there was worship, and that he did what? God spoke to her. Before he bid Mary and Martha, Godspeed, let's pick up through the window into their home one more time. We're looking. Okay. And the entire family is there. Okay. Now, Mary, Martha, praise God. Mary, Martha, and Jesus, and the brother Lazarus, whose name Jesus raised from the D-E-A-D. -E we see a truly joyous celebration as well grateful folks prepare another meal for the beloved Jesus. Okay, so on that note, my takeaway is, is that Mary and Martha 
the two faces of these two people are amazing and that this chapter on the contrasting yet equally remarkable lives of these two sisters, I had definite difficulty naming their section. Should it be remarkable friends, okay, or should it be remarkable uh, relationships? Should it be remarkable worship? Should it be remarkable answers? Should it be remarkable love? But my dilemma points to the many wonderful messages of these two female siblings are, is that we must realize that we can serve God in different ways, whether in tiny acts of a meal being prepared or a costly sacrifice of a lavish gift. And we must also watch out for the busyness, making sure that we're not too busy or too bothered or too bogged down in the details of our W-O-R-K that we fail to worship God, G-O-D, and we must call to do what? We must call upon Jesus as our first and primary source of strength when we face crisis and tribulation. So tomorrow's topic will be Darkest Lydia, Priscilla, and Phoebe. Okay. And on that note, we are just gonna take it down. Take it, take it. Okay, take it down. Deep, deep breath, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Breathe in, breathe in. Hmm. I think I should have. Hmm. What's going on, Corey? How's business? How's the uh how's everything? How's the family? Hi uh, hi Adam. How you doing? How's the family? Hey Miss Didi, what's going on? Are you uh, is everyone still marching, protesting? Uh what are you guys doing today? Huh? Let's do it. Let's all get into the zone. We're getting into the zone. Get into the zone and deep breath in. <laughs> divine life plan. The divine life plan. Now, we all have a divine life plan that is set forth for us, but we incarnate and which we participate in choosing, okay? Imagine that before you were born or I was born or came into existence that we have divine source energy, decided that we were to learn in this life and how we are to contribute to humankind, we come to earth and promptly forget all of this in our subconscious mind. However, our subconscious mind, which remains connected to the divine source, is all-knowing and holds the entire blueprint of our divine life. Plan. When we look back through the themes of our life and we try to figure out what it is our true purpose might be, what are your hobbies? What are you good at? What are your reoccurring themes in your life? What would you love to do if you have, if you didn't have to work? <laughs> really? Now, these are things to ask yourself now. Do situations keep coming up into your life where you take care of someone or where you perhaps your life plan is to reach or to heal, perhaps your life purpose purpose is to build or create. Perhaps your purpose is to lead by example. It may be something completely different from how you learn or earn or make a living, but is it happening? And if so, is it happening often? Okay. So today I want you 
to meditate on this and write down any reoccurring themes in your L-I-F-E. Ask what these things may have to do with your divine life plan. Write down your hobbies. Write down your passions. Write down your D-E-S-I-R-E-S -E -E and anything that comes to you that you have any inclination may be related to your life's purpose or direction, okay? So you're going to meditate on what your divine life plan is and then you're going to write it down, okay? Don't forget into your don't forget to take your get into your power stands, your power stands, but I'll do my seated on the throne position. I'll do that part. I'm seated on the throne. <laughs> with Christ Jesus, but you can do it standing into your power stance or yoga stance or whatever kind of stance, okay? And then we're going to get do getting into the zone, the Shekinah glory, okay? Ready? Feel the anointing, feel the anointing, radiating, being happy, being happy, 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 being good, being kind, feel the positive energy. If you're working, uh, whatever it is that you're doing, okay, we're just going to take a deep breath in and breathe in. Let's get centered. Okay, now there was a divine plan, palms up and palm up like this, have them seated in the palm of your lap. There's a divine plan that set forth for my life. That plan was designed by the divine source and myself and is in the highest of goodness for my soul's purpose, okay? I may have wandered off track of my divine plan, but from this day forth, okay, I submit to my subconscious to point me in the right direction of my divine purpose, okay? P-U-R-P-O-S-E. And I now release all these depth, D E B T. S, all people, I release all people, I release all things that are not part of my divine plan, and I ask that they release me, okay? I know that I'm living my divine plan, I shall experience happiness and abundance, and I know that part of my divine plan is to experience the J-O-Y-S, the joys of life, and that this includes my financial freedom to enjoy all the things that I wish to experience. And yeah, I'm entitled to enjoy all the things that I wish to uh, experience, and I ask that I may live my divine plan and follow the work that I'm meant to do, okay, immediately and in the highest of my goodness or in the highest of goodness itself, okay? So think about what, what it is, write it down, take a moment to reflect and meditate on the paragraph that I just read. And what it is asking you to do, write down your insights that you have or reword it in a way that is mean, meaningful to you. Okay. And on that note, I love each and every one of you. Love you all. Love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, Diddy. Love you, Marvin. Love you, Adam. Love you, Karee. Love you, Kamar. Love you, Azizi. Love you, Hassan. Oh, let's see. Love you, Lacey. Then there is, what is all of this stuff? Who was the first person to sign in, Hassan? Okay. And I uh, love you, uh, Renee. Love you, Susan. Love you, Amanda. Love you, Karen. 
Love you, Mark. Love my family, love my city, love my mentors, love my mastermind group, love my clients, and uh, love my family, love my friends, and I love you too, Jennifer, okay? Love my city, love my state, love my country, love my planet, and I love humanity, okay? So be blessed, each and every single one of you have a wonderful day, and... It is like counting the days of the pandemic, but be happy, be encouraged, and that things, there's a blessing in this. There is a blessing in all of this, okay? There's a blessing in this, so hang in there, be blessed, hang in there, everyone, and have a blessed day, okay? Mm-hmm. Wow.